Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. God's purpose is beyond our comprehension when we go through things that are hard. And I know right now some of you are going through some very, very, very hard things and it makes no sense to you and you don't understand and it doesn't seem fair. Trust God and do good. I think that you can make a decision ahead of time before you ever get hurt how you're going to respond. And I think it needs to be part of our walk with God that we're always praying, God, if and when I get hurt, help me respond properly. When somebody offends me, help me not to take the offense. Be ready, be prepared to forgive. In Habakkuk 3, 16 through 19, it starts out and he says, I heard and my whole inner self trembled. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay and rottenness entered my bones and I trembled in my place because I must wait quietly for the day of distress for the people to arise who will invade and attack us. Habakkuk knew that they were about to be invaded by a great enemy. And he knew that there was trouble, trouble, trouble coming. And he was, he was shaken and quaking. How many of you know sometimes when you say you've been to the doctor and he calls you and wants you to come in for a consultation as soon as you can, it's like, uh-oh. Man, you can get scared and nervous before you ever get there. Well, look at the decision that Habakkuk made before the enemy ever got there. Though the fig tree does not blossom and there's no fruit on the vine, though the yield of the olive fails and the field produces no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the stalls, in other words, no matter how bad things turn out, I will choose to rejoice in the Lord. Come on. We can make a decision ahead of time that no matter what happens, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. Can I tell you something? You're not going to like it, but I'm going to tell you anyway because it's true. Everything is not always going to turn out the way you would like it to. <laughs> Welcome to real life. This is not a movie. It's not a soap opera. People are mean. They're selfish. They're self-centered. They'll take advantage of you. You'll get hurt. Yet you can make a choice. You don't have to hate people because they're mean. You can actually have compassion for them and feel sorry for them. And that's really what we're supposed to do. I got to the point with my dad where I felt so bad for him because he never had a life. He didn't get a good start. He wasn't taught properly. And that doesn't mean that what he did was right. It wasn't right, and he knew it wasn't right, but he had no life. When he died, there was nobody to go to his funeral. Nobody cared. Nobody missed him. All he had at the end of his life was regrets. Don't waste your life and get to be 90 years old and look back and have nothing but regrets. Have something to look back on that you can be happy about. I will rejoice because the Lord God is my strength and my source of courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places. And this is what the Amplified Bible says high places are. Challenge and responsibility. Hmm. Come on, I don't want to have to do that again. Act like you got it. <laughs> don't waste your pain. That's the actual title of my message today. Everybody gets hurt. Everybody wants to be healed. But not everybody is then ready to help somebody else. And I believe that there's a purpose in what happens in our life. I don't think that God is the one that hurts us, but I do think that sometimes he could deliver us sooner than what he does. <laughs> How many of you think he could do that? 
And it gets very confusing sometimes why he doesn't. If you could deliver me now, why are you going to make me go through this for a year before you do it? Because to be honest, we're just like kids. And you know, sometimes you got to let kids hurt for a little while, kind of pay the price for what they've done. Why? Because you love them and you want them to learn not to do it again. <laughs> Amen? So, if I have gotten myself into a mess through lack of knowledge or bad choices or disobedience or whatever, sometimes the best thing that God can do for me is not come and just swiftly deliver me from it, but let me learn a good lesson because you always gain experience by the things that you go through. And I want to tell you today that God is looking for people to work in his kingdom, but he wants people with experience. Amen. Amen. You can have five college degrees and not be as valuable as somebody who has no degree but has five or ten years of experience. Well, my life's just been wasted. Well, it doesn't have to be. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, there was nothing left but crumbs and little fragments. In John 6, 12, it said, gather up the fragments that nothing be wasted. And I believe that's what God wants to say over your life today. He wants to gather up all the fragments, take all the little pieces that are left over that you feel like are no good, all this stuff that you feel has been wasted in your life, he wants you to gather it all up and say, here it is, God. If you can do anything with this mess, it's yours. He will take all of those fragmented pieces of your life, and he will make something beautiful out of them, and he will cause you, by his grace, to be able to use what's been pain to you as gain for somebody else. All you have to do is think for just a minute. If you like my teaching, you know why you like it? because I didn't just read a book and get up here and preach. Experience, experience is the difference in dry, dead theology and anointed preaching. Want me to say it again? Experience is the difference in dry, dead theology an anointed preaching and teaching that changes your life when you hear it. That's why two people could preach you the same message, and if one of them just put together a sermon that he got out of a book, it can put you to sleep, and you can hear the same message, same words, by somebody who's lived it and gone through it, and it's on fire, and it cuts right down to your heart and changes your life. And I'll tell you the truth, I just don't try to teach on stuff that I don't know anything about. Yes. Somebody said to me recently, I think you should do a, a, a series on Revelation. I said, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> I should not. <laughs> Why? Because I don't understand it. And I, I know it's important, and I read Revelations because the Bible says you're blessed when you do, but there are a thousand different theories about the end times. And I'll tell you what my theory is, just be ready to go at any time. <laughs> I mean, why do we need to know? I mean, when he's, I mean, Paul thought he was living in the last days. Well, so we all say Jesus is coming back soon. Well, I mean, I know one thing. If he was living in the last days, it's the laster of the last days now. And so I don't know if Jesus will come back in my lifetime, but I'll tell you what I'm happy about. He can come get me tonight and I'm ready to go. And that's the way you want to live. You don't want to live like, boy, I hope I, you know, 
I want to get one of these Revelation series so I can know when Jesus is coming back so I can hurry up and get ready in case he's coming soon. <laughs> no, honey, we got to live ready, not get ready. <laughs> live ready. Don't be afraid of dying. Be excited to go to heaven. That's when life really starts. And Jesus is coming back soon. And this is no time to be messing around and not doing what God's telling you to do. And if nothing else, we can start here this weekend by forgiving everybody that's ever hurt us and making a decision. I am not going to live my life angry at people who are hurting me and probably don't even know what they're doing. I'm going to do what God says and I'm going to pray for them because I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to be saved and I want them to have a good life. And when you start doing that, the devil better get out of the way because he's done controlling you. We got a little Holy Ghost fire going on in here today. Now I'm in the middle of 20 messages and don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let your mess become your ministry. You know, I was talking to a girl the other day and boy, her life turned out so much different than what she thought it was going to. I remember her before she got married and looked like she was going to be a, a really good preacher and she worked for us for a while in our prison ministry and she got married and she had a daughter and her first daughter had cerebral palsy and was um, autistic in addition to that. And so she's had, needless to say, a rough go. She had a little boy and they told her he was autistic and she stood against it and said, no, he's not. I'm not having it. And uh, he ended up being okay. But instead of just being bitter and resentful because her life didn't turn out the way that she thought it was going to, she has made it a ministry now to, she's trying to work with as many churches as possible to get them to have a special program a special room and get volunteers who will take care of the special needs kids on Sunday morning so the parents can have that one time a week to sit in church together. Because see, when, when you, like, I don't know what that's like because I've never dealt with that. But she's taking... See, when you, when you take something bad and you, you turn it around and try to do something good with it, then that alleviates a lot of your pain. That doesn't mean that it's still not difficult where days are at. But, you know, I'm using what happened to me to try to help other people because I've seen what God can do in your life if you'll do things his way. The world just sees things so differently and they don't understand that you, you can have a tragedy and come out of it triumphantly, actually better than you were when you went into it. That's the kind of God we serve. Come on, that's the kind of God we serve. He can take a tragedy and turn it into a blessing. See, there's a lot of stuff I don't know, but i tell you one thing I do know, and I believe this. I'm not just preaching. I believe that if we want God's will and we love him, that he will take everything that happens to us and work it out for our good. I believe that. Some of the people that work for me and people that we hang out with, we have a little saying, this is going to end well. This is going to end well. Whatever you're going through right now, if you'll do things God's way, it's going to end well. Now, I'm not making any promises to the disobedient, but if you're willing to love God and do what he's telling you to do, come on. And we're talking this weekend about getting better and not bitter, being burnt but not bitter. And that means letting go of all this junk from the past 
And, and don't, don't offer up an excuse. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know how hard it is. I do know how hard it is. God does not anoint us to do easy stuff. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in our life because we can do, listen to me, we can do whatever God tells us to do because he helps us do it. You can forgive. Okay, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. These are cool scriptures right here. Listen, bless, gratefully, praise, and adored be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. No, get a hold of verse four. Who comforts and encourages us in every trouble so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So what's he saying here? He's like, okay, when you're in trouble, you've got the God of all comfort to call on, the God of mercy and comfort. And he's gonna come and comfort you and yes, he wants you to feel good, but there's a higher purpose. He wants to comfort you. He wants to, you've been hurt. He wants to heal you. Now he wants you to go and help somebody else. And he wants you, because you've had that experience of seeing what God will do for you, now, he, now you are licensed and equipped with experience to go and tell somebody else, God can comfort you in this he can get you through it, and they're going to believe you, not because you're convincing them, but because there is an anointing on your life because of what you've been through. When you go through things, you come out with an anointing. Come on, the lady who anointed Jesus' feet, she had to break the bottle. There has to be some crushing done for the anointing oil to come out. If you study how they got that anointing oil, it came from seeds that had to be crushed in order to get to the oil. And sometimes our flesh has to be crushed in order for God to get to the good stuff that's on the inside of us that's really gonna help people. Amen? How many times have we all said to God, this is, gonna, this is killing me? <laughs> and one day I finally realized, you know what, it's actually true. It really is killing me so Christ can live through me. Did you hear me? Oh, I can't stand this. Yeah, you can. If you couldn't, you wouldn't be going through it. Okay, God comforts you, and what does he expect you to do? He expects you to turn around now and comfort somebody else. Come on, God doesn't heal us just so we can sit around and feel good. There's a purpose for you. If there was no purpose for you, you'd already be out of here and in your mansion in heaven. I don't care how young you are or how old you are, God has got a purpose for you. If you're here, God's got a purpose for you. And so instead of just staring at the preacher all the time and waiting for him to do something, you need to find out what God wants you to do and get busy doing it. And it probably won't be a platform ministry and you better pray God that it's not. But let me tell you something. Every single one of you can help somebody. Every one of you can help somebody. Every one of you can put a smile on somebody's face. You can make somebody's life better. And when you do, you get so happy, you don't hardly know what to do with yourself. God's purpose is beyond our comprehension when we go through things that are hard. And I know right now some of you are going through some very, very, very hard things and it makes no sense to you, and you don't understand, and it doesn't seem fair, trust God and do good. Amen. You know, I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but I began to notice in my life that I would be having a very serious problem and I couldn't help myself. There was nothing, no way, no how that I could do to fix my problem. But while I couldn't fix my problem, God was using me to fix other people's problems. Now that's a bit annoying. 
It's like, okay, why are you letting me help all them and I can't help myself? Well, it's very simple. God doesn't want us helping ourselves. He wants us helping one another. Amen? And so here's the way it works. When I reach out and help you, then God reaches out and helps me. But if I'm reaching in trying to help myself and I have no time for you, then all I end up doing is wasting my time and I never get helped. Are you understanding that? So if you have a problem right now, stop trying to fix yourself. I mean, do what God shows you to do, but be a blessing to somebody else. If we can ever get around to acting like real Christians, I mean, we just need to get down to it. One new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. How can we convince the world? Everybody that's a Christian, get out there and love each other. Love your enemies. Love your believing brothers and sisters. Forgive people that treat you like dirt. Bless them, help them when they need help. Joseph was hurt, he received healing. And what did he do? He helped other people. Genesis 50, 18 through 21. Then his brothers went and fell down before him in confession, and they said, Behold, we are your servants and your slaves. These are the brothers who had sold him. But Joseph said to them, Get this, church, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Vengeance is his, not mine. In other words, yes, I'm at a place now where I could get you back. But that's not my place. I have one thing to do, and that's bless you. God will take care of everything else. Hello. I have only one thing to do, and that's bless you, and God will take care of everything else. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Watch the rest of this. In order to bring about this present outcome that many people would be kept safe as they are this day. God had to get him into a position where he would not only be in the position to do it, but he would have enough experience to do it to manage Pharaoh's household during that famine and in the process be able to take care of his own family who had mistreated him. Come on, God is so much smarter than we are. <laughs> you know, Ruth was hurt when her husband died and her brother-in-law. And when her mother-in-law, Naomi, who was a Jew and Ruth was a Moabitess, she worshiped Moab. And so when Naomi decided, well, now that her husband's dead and her two daughter-in-law's husbands are dead who were her sons. She decided she was gonna go back to her own people in Judah. And she encouraged Ruth, a Moabite, to go on back to her home because she said, I'm broke, I'm poor, I have nothing to offer you, I can't take care of you. But Ruth chose the harder path you know how challenging it is to find anybody that will choose the harder path? Moses did that. It says he preferred to, to endure hardship with his brethren than to live as the son of Pharaoh. He walked away from a cushy life in order to do what God wanted him to do and be in a position to help people. Well, Ruth chose to stay with her mother-in-law and they had nothing to eat. She had to glean in the fields in order to even get food to eat. She chose the hard path because she believed it was what God wanted her to do. And she said, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Well, she ended up marrying the richest guy in the county and coming into the direct bloodline of Jesus Christ. Not a bad reward, amen. You know, our pain can have a purpose if we're obedient to do whatever God shows us to do. 
He can not only use it for our good, but also for the good of those around us. Let your pain become somebody else's gain. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young. But because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me to the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future, change her situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl, or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding, and do something that you know will make a difference. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you, and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Al gezien, frisse impulsen. Nu bij Joyce Meyer Nederlands op Facebook.